Well, we're interested in the role of enzymes in the pathogenesis of MS, and in particular, we're interested in a family of enzymes called calocrines. And in prior studies, we've examined one of these calocrines called calocrine 6, and we found that this is elevated in the active MS lesion and that it rapidly degrades myelin. A uh, myelin is the fatty covering that coats the axon, and it's like in, an insulation on a wire and allows the nerve impulse to conduct along the axon. Uh, after we discovered high levels of this enzyme in the MS lesion, we looked in animal models of MS what would happen if we blocked the enzyme. And when we were able to block the activity of this enzyme, we slowed the progression of disease in animal models of MS. Importantly, we found out that calocrine 6 is a member of a family of 15 enzymes. And so we wondered what the potential role of other members of this enzyme family might be in MS. And through a study funded by the National MS Society, we were, we've been able to look at the level of five of these enzymes in the serum of MS patients compared to controls. And what we found is that the level of two of these enzymes is significantly elevated in the serum of MS patients, calocrine 1 and calocrine 6. And not only was the level elevated, but when we compared the relapsing remitting patient to the primary progressive patient, really the level of these enzymes was primarily elevated in the progressive phase of disease. And additionally, we found out by looking at the level of disability in the patients that the higher your level of calocrine 1, really the higher the level of patient disability. MS is believed to be an autoimmune demyelinating disease of the central nervous system. And essentially, you know, in layman's terms, patients experience two types of MS, essentially. 40% of the patients experience a relapsing remitting disease course. So periods of increased disability or relapse is followed by a period of recovery or remission. About 40% of the relapsing remitting patients will go on to experience a more progressive disease course. And in this case, the increase in disability is not accompanied by superimposed periods of recovery. Scientists now believe that the progressive form of the disease is not only accompanied by myelin loss, but also significant neuron and axon degeneration. And this is what contributes to the permanent neurologic disability seen in MS patients. With this in mind, we tested the effects of calocrine 1 and calocrine 6 on the ability of axons to grow in culture. And when we did this, we saw that both enzymes cause a rapid neuron retraction and cell death. So taken together with the elevated levels of calocrine 1 and calocrine 6 in patient serum, along with the ability of these enzymes to promote neurodegeneration, we think that these enzymes may be key players in the primary progressive phase of MS, or the progressive phase of MS. Well, we're really at the very earliest stages of studying the role of these enzymes, um, and I think there's a considerable amount of work to do. Um, if you ask me what we'd like to do next, <laughs> what, what we'd like to do is to look at these enzymes as therapeutic targets. I really think for patients that an enzyme is a great target because we can identify pharmacologic inhibitors that fit in the binding pocket and block the activity of the enzyme. So right now we're um, trying to develop specific inhibitors for calocrine 1 and calocrine 6, and we can test these then in animal models of progressive MS and see if, they, if these modulate the disease course. Also, because we know that um, relapsing, remitting, and secondary progressive patients respond differently to therapies, We'd like to understand bet better whether we can monitor the level of these enzymes in patients to determine which type of disease course they're experiencing so we can tailor the therapy to the individual patient. And finally, because there's 15 of these enzymes, we'd like to do a larger study to look at a number of these other enzymes in the serum of MS patients to see if we can develop a calocrine signature of the type of MS a patient is experiencing.